Good afternoon, my dear friends and colleagues. It is with pride and honor that I welcome all of you to the launch of the certificate course on foundational futures thinking offered by the Development Academy of the Philippines Graduate School of Public and Development Management. We are delighted to be in the presence of world-renowned futurists like Dr. Marcus Botsi of the University of Sunshine Coast, Australia, who is very kind enough to say yes to our invitation and to our future collaborations. With us also is Dr. Anita Sykes-Kelleher, who is a mentor and also our adjunct international professor. We'll have later on Dr. Shunji Ji of Tam Kang University, Taiwan. And uh, it was lovely to, um, to receive his yes for this launch. And we are supposed to be joined by um, Dr. Sohail Inayatula, inaugural UNESCO Chair in Future Studies. And I would like to acknowledge his uh, mentorship and his kind assistance in uh, really encouraging us uh, to do futures thinking in the Philippines. Later on, Senator Pia Cayetano, Chair of the Senate Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation and Futures Thinking will join us for an inspirational message. And Dr. Tier Soronquillo, President of Batangas State University and Philippine Association, and President of the Philippine Association of State Universities and Colleges, will send his video message. Also with us is Dr. Manuel Muhi, President of Polytechnic University, and we had an initial uh, conversation on FT collaboration. We also have later on our President, uh, Chief Executive Officer. Uh, Attorney Engelbert C. Karanen, Jr. Also joining us are our esteemed senior fellows, Dr. Alex Brillantes, Dr. Lili Domingo, Dr. Re Reggie Ugedan, who composed the APGS-PDM's academic team for futures thinking. Without their technical guidance and support, we would not have uh, gone this far in our future studies initiatives. We also have with us Dr. Norma, who is now um, stationed in Germany, uh, Dr. Malu Rebolida, Dr. Henry Basilio, Mr. Tony Kalau, Dr. Nasef Adyong, Dr. Nick Agustin, and we also have Prof. Hannah Gonzalez. And we're happy that we are joined by Representative uh, Geraldine Roman. Good afternoon, ma'am. So, um, we also have our colleagues from the Philippine Futures Thinking Society, Vice President Prof. Sherman Cruz, our supervising fellow for this certificate course and who is responsible for bringing in global experts on futures thinking. And we also have Mr. Noel De Gea of the Office of uh, Senator Pia Cayetano. So the certificate course on foundation of futures thinking is a remarkable step to democratizing features thinking in the country, particularly in the public sector. We are faced by turbulence, uncertainties, novelties, and ambiguities, or the tuna world. Actually, this is a new acronym that researchers have coined during the pandemic. So with this tuna world, we would like to employ evidence-based participatory features thinking methodology to look into the unspoken and the unknowns. And through features thinking, we will be able to improve or strengthen our public policy works. But how did we arrive in today's initiative? Well, I want to look back uh, a few months ago and um, looking back, I am amazed by how much the Graduate School of Public and Development Management has achieved in the past couple of months while working from home. So it was one weekend actually in March during the implementation of our executive course on public management research. Actually, this is another advocacy that we want to strengthen across the country because we saw the gaps on research. So going back, uh, the research team at the Graduate School of Public and Development Management conceived this somewhat ambitious idea to create a hub and laboratory or a hub lab that will consolidate all our efforts to advance public management in the country. So later on, we called it GSPDM Innovation Hub Lab or the KI Hub Lab as shown on your screen. There are six triangles or we call it six platforms. And one of the platforms is Future Studies Education. 
And because of the pandemic, we did not anticipate that we will be able to make significant strides in our future studies efforts. But as they say, good things happen when you least expect it. So we started by facilitating the discourse on futures thinking by inviting experts from Futures Platform Finland for a discussion on April 23, 2020. Afterwards, the Senate Committee on SDGs and Vision Features Thinking, chaired by Senator Thea, gave the Graduate School of Public and Development Management the opportunity to present on May 14, 2020, the first strategic foresight framework for the Philippines, which we, Dr. Domingo, Dr. Beliantes, Prof. Flores, Dr. G. Ugedan, and I, along with our research associates, uh, Ms. C.J. Almodal and Celine Abelia, developed. On June 19, 2020, on the birthday of our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal, the Graduate School of Public and Development Management and our partner institutions launched the Philippine Futures Thinking Society, or Field Features. This is a professional organization committed to propelling the practice of futures thinking in the country with the vision igniting the Filipino Hiraya through the power of foresight. So these activities, a few more Senate hearings, and last week, a briefing on features thinking with legislators in the House of Representatives organized by Senator Pia Caetano, led us to today, the launch of the certificate course on foundational features thinking. So it has been a busy couple of months, but all have been worthwhile because our efforts resulted in today's gathering. And I'm very excited uh, with this certificate course, and I look forward to seeing what our graduates can achieve after this. We hope that this certificate course uh, will be able to will be able to transform mindsets through the practice of futures thinking so we can form a society that is not only able to anticipate future scenarios but can also adapt survive and thrive and create a future that cares so thank you very much to all of you for gracing us with your voluble presence Hiraya Manawari po sa ating lahat. At this point in time, I would like to call on Ms. CJ Almodal, our program manager, to introduce our keynote speaker. Thank you very much, Dr. Lizan. It is my honor to introduce our keynote speaker for today's event. Our keynote speaker is a futurist and educator with a keen interest in intercultural he teaches courses in world history and sustainable futures at the University of the Sunshine Coast in Australia. In 2014, he was awarded the Taiwan Fellowship, which enabled him to work with professors and colleagues at Tamkang University and National Taiwan University in capacitating engineering students through futures thinking. Our keynote speaker has a remarkable track record in research and publication. Among his notable works are Features Thinking for Social Foresight with Richard Slaughter in 2005, Neo-Humanist Educational Futures, Liberating the Pedagogical Intellect in 2006, and Alternative Educational Futures, Pedagogies for Emergent Worlds in 2008 with Sohail Inayatullah and Ivana Milojevic. Our keynote speaker is also the deputy head of the School of Social Sciences at USC, where he is involved with learning and teaching and promotes innovations in student engagement and finding real life and hands-on opportunities for students in the humanities. Ladies and gentlemen, our keynote speaker, Dr. Marcus Bossi. Dr. Marcus, can you unmute your microphone? Uh, can you unmute your microphone, Dr. Marcus? No. There you go. Um, is it unmuted now? Thank you. Yes. Someone just turned it off on me. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Anyway, here I am. Uh, sometimes people would prefer me to be muted, actually, because sometimes we have to ask difficult questions. <clears throat> but it's it's a, I'm delighted to be here. 
today. And I wish to thank you as the Dean, Dr. Parente Kalina and her colleagues for the invitation to say a few words to inaugurate this new certificate. And I was very impressed with your um, overview of the activities over the last few months. And you, you struck a chord with me because research as advocacy is something I think that is under, um, undervalued. Uh, and for me, much of what we do in the future space is research as advocacy. You know, I'm really delighted to see the Graduate School of Public Development and Management prioritizing futures thinking, especially when you could have gone to much less promising options like futures proofing or future proofing. Um, futures thinking is expansive, is open, is engaged. Future proofing is build the walls around us and keep us safe and secure from whatever is out there and particularly keep us safe and secure from change because we're terrified of changing. So there are a host of reasons why a course like the one you've uh, developed is timely and necessary. The truth is we are in a mess. I think we all agree with that. But this is a mess that was bound to happen one way or another. I think COVID-19 has galvanized people's attention in a way that uh, even the, the horrific fires that were occurring earlier this year haven't. Um, so first thing I would say for, as a futurist is that, you know, I'm an optimist. And so we don't need to despair or be overwhelmed, but we need to rise to the task before us. For me, this is a task that needs skilled managers and also lyrical poets. We need both of these groups to work together to cooperate on developing the conditions for an anticipatory society such as the one that you envisage. But it's not easy to find what I would call policy managers and policy poets who can easily work together. The managers are over here and the poets are over here type thing. And I'm using the term poet metaphorically in a sense, but for people with you know, imaginative visions for the future and for the world around them, Whereas the managers are concrete skill-based utilitarians who, who want to get things done now. So in the space that you've created with a course like this, we, we can find pragmatic and practice-based approaches, then they can come together. We need to demonstrate to the managers that there are sound tools that foster foresight and anticipation and imagination. But we also need to validate those poets, those policy poets, who can find a place for their dreams and for visions of an anticipatory society. So I believe such a space is offered by futures thinking and a course such as the one that you have, we were inaugurating today. Futures thinking is open-ended and at its best, it's aspirational. It's unashamedly works towards goals for those uh, of, of an engaged nature. You know, it's not just um, utopian, for, you know, in, in that kind of sense of ungrounded. When taught well, futures thinking builds an anticipatory dimension okay, that fosters futures literacies and provides a set of tools to enable proactive and pragmatic action that's not bounded by the constraints of a given or an impaired present. It's beyond the present, but grounded in the present. It invites us to tell new stories and to enact alternative futures. In short, your course has the potential to do these things. So I would like to ask a few questions, sort of to initiate, I guess, further discussion later down the track. What does it take to harness a general uh, longing for a world, a better world, an anticipatory world? What does it take to harness that longing? What does it take for our systems of governance to become truly anticipatory in the manifestation of societies that look to the collective well-being of all stakeholders. And by that, I mean also the natural world is a stakeholder in our world, in our societies. And it's often forgotten. I think at least it takes three things, which I'd like to touch on line, briefly right now. Um, the first is that we need a polity that fosters diversity and trusts in open experimental processes that are value driven. So this is a policy that's not utilitarian. It's not overly fearful of its own citizenry and, and the potential of the citizen in action to initiate innovative uh, and inclusive futures, for instance. So that element of trust 
is, is needs to be there. But it, it takes something else. It takes people with courage to dream and put those dreams to the test. That means people who have some degree of influence, people who are prepared to go out there and take a, a futures understandings and, and built around futures tools that you'll learn uh, about in the, a course such as this and apply them. So these are courageous people. It also takes futures thinking itself as an enabling process for the previous two elements to take flight. Futures thinking, as I said, is open-ended, but it's not um, ungrounded. Futures thinking is a praxis-based process in and of itself. So when we think management, when we think policy, when we think governance, when we think business and so on, the best of those forms are always actioning futures expectations and, and, and uh, perhaps building scenarios and so on. And, it, and they're doing this either consciously or unconsciously, anticipating and working towards preferred futures, alternative futures or not, depending on where you sit in that landscape. So in my mind, power and influence need frameworks to manifest those three points. Clearly, society would not function without frameworks of all kinds, laws and social norms, cultural norms, and a whole range of systems products that sort of structure together. But a key form is, the, is education itself. Now, I'm not thinking education simply as in this course, for instance, but a course, a good course, bleeds into the informal and non-formal. So for me, education is a multi-layered appreciation of human activities works from the formal, a course like this. Sometimes it's in informal and sometimes it's non-formal. In short, education needs to be praxis-based where the formal structures that we're seeing today in a course like this flow into informal praxis. That's in, on the streets of Manila or wherever you are. And they flow into non-formal settings such as our life world and our work worlds. So this, the, these settings are the domains in which futures thinking takes flight because it becomes futures action, which is um, at its best inclusive, stimulating, agile and resilient. So your course has the potential to upskill folk, both in policy development and also at the coalface of policy delivery. It, at its best, it will empower I just lost my screen for my notes. So it's going to empower uh, managers and the poets. I like to work towards open-ended, resilient futures. It will support Philippine society in its governance and business and community structures. It will help them engage with that yearning that I mentioned earlier, the yearning for a better world. So I guess in conclusion, COVID-19 has highlighted the challenges that we face. It's shaken some of our foundational assumptions about life and its purpose. It's dragged us out of our echo chambers and exposed us to present realities and made us feel vulnerable, but also in transition. But the big question is the, the elephant in the room often when we're talking about this is as a transitioning to what? Where are we transitioning to? So this, this is where visionary processes come in, like foresight and foresight skills and foundational trust in the future, not a fear of the future, a trust in the future. And our capacity to rise and meet the challenges that the future poses us. This is where your course has the potential to harness the skills of managers and the poets in the realization of an anticipatory society for the Philippines and also beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Marcus, for that very enlightening and inspirational message and really in helping us how to craft our certificate course on futures thinking. I hope you can still stay with us, Dr. Marcus. I intend to. But anytime you can, uh, you can leave if uh, you have uh, appointments. So at this point in time, I would like to uh, request again our program manager, CJ Almadal, to introduce another keynote speaker of us who really champions uh, futures thinking in, uh, in the Senate and in the House of Representatives, and who is also responsible for this futures thinking initiatives. CJ? Good afternoon once again. 
Our next keynote speaker is a mother, a lawyer, a triathlete, and a futures thinker. She is leading efforts in the Senate to rethink and craft strategic policy to prepare the country for the possible futures that lie ahead. She chairs the Senate Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation, and Futures Thinking, which has been holding a series of online public hearings to bring other local and international experts to discuss the future of work, health, transportation, and learning delivery systems. She has also been working to accelerate funding for health infrastructure and support for medical frontliners to enable the healthcare system to effectively deliver medical services and respond to health emergencies to safeguard our people. A biker and an advocate of health and fitness, she is pushing for the integration of sustainable modes of transport and mobility in public transportation system for the new normal and beyond. Most recently, she has led the passage of the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act, which outlined the government's comprehensive response to overcome the novel coronavirus pandemic. Finally, she chairs the Senate Ways and Means panel, which has been pushing for comprehensive reforms in the country's tax and fiscal incentive systems to help foster economic resilience, inclusive recovery, and sustainable growth in the post-COVID world. She is the Senate's Pinay in Action, or PIA. Ladies and gentlemen, our keynote speaker, Honorable Senator Pia S. Cayetano. Good afternoon, Senator Pia. Welcome to the Graduate School of Public and Development Management. Hello, Dr. Lizan. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm so happy to join you, and I'm so excited for this course. Um, I have, a, I have a little bit of a presentation and I wanted to be sure I was one of the first because I can't come after the experts, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm just learning along the way. So I really am just so excited to be among the experts and to learn every day that uh, we have these um, meetings, conferences, when you join our hearings, I'm really excited about that. So without further ado, let me give my short presentation. Um, I've actually shared the link, the Facebook link of, um, this launch on my uh, social media in the hope that um, uh, young people, um, well, young and old, doesn't matter, um, are, you know, start learning about futures thinking as well. So let me begin. Um, first of all, a warm welcome to all our foreign uh, guests and speakers. Um, it is an honor for us to have you, for us to have you with us today. Um, this, op this, Time of COVID has really given us the opportunity to meet with more experts, meet with more like-minded people, and really um, gain more experience than I, I have in the past few months. Um, that's coming from somebody like me who, who does take time out of my schedule to join international conferences, but that really requires me to travel. But uh, this time of COVID has really uh, given us uh, the ability to be comfortable online and to have um, these kind of, of conferences, meetings, webinars. And I seriously don't think that I would have gained this much knowledge um, if, not, if, if not for this opportunity to take advantage of uh, this situation that COVID has brought about us. So if only for that, I'm grateful. Um, so for those experts, um, much of what I'm gonna say is nothing new to you, but I'm really speaking, I don't wanna preach to the choir, I'm really trying to speak to those who are new to futures thinking. And I myself still consider myself a student of futures thinking. So I learned VUCA from, from the experts here. And uh, for those unfamiliar with that word, it's volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. So this is a VUCA world that we are living in. And um, what, you know, what does this volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguousness um, really mean? Well, it means different things to different people. Um, unemployment, obviously, is uncertainty. Um, volatility means, you know, a lot of change in our, in our economic um, uh, future. A lot of young people are suddenly, uh, their dreams of their dream job, uh, which they were ready to apply for, did not materialize. Uh, some of them can't even, they don't even know if they'll be able to graduate because how are they going to do their practicum and so on and so forth. So, so 
these are the um, the situation that we are uh, faced with in this time of COVID. But without COVID, a lot of these things were still happening anyway. So how do we survive? But I like to say beyond survival is thriving. How do we thrive in this VUCA world? And what I've learned is we can manage to do this with futures thinking. So just very quickly, um, you know, for those unfamiliar with uh, with um, uh, how how Bill Gates came about, let me just go back to that slide. Yeah. So how how uh, Bill Gates and his team came about predicting another um, another pandemic? Well, for most scientists, there's nothing um, there's nothing that could not have been predicted. Scientists knew that this would happen. In fact, if you listen carefully uh, to Bill Gates' talk, um, it was just a matter of time that something would explode in this magnitude. So there's no magic about it. There was no crystal ball. It was really about reading the science and being prepared. Um, so that's, that's Bill Gates and, and so many other scientists out there. Sadly, the world did not listen as it should have. Um, Meanwhile, in this other article that I posted, it's about Taiwan preparing for the next pandemic. So I think this was an article written about a month ago, and I've been using it in some of my presentations. So here we are, most countries um, still um, trying to figure out you know, what to do. But Taiwan, that has had it pretty much under control, um, is already preparing for the next. So really, it goes back to taking time to look at what's happening and taking time to visualize and to prepare for those next possible for these other possibilities, whether they're good or bad, whatever it is. Okay, so um, so in our own home grounds, um, I guess it was really timely that the Senate uh, was able to come up with this committee, which I pushed for, and so we now have for the first time a Senate committee on SDGs, innovation, and futures thinking. And uh, what we've been able to do, again, mostly, mostly during this time of quarantine, uh, is to have hearings on the following items, futures of education, futures of health, sustainable transportation, sustainable cities and communities, uh, which I'm doing jointly with another Senate committee, and various hearings on um, sustainability, on, on how we are where we are with the with each sustainable goals, which each of the sustainable goals. So um, this is localized uh, in the Philippines, but again, because of the opportunity brought about by COVID, we've had many experts join us, and some of them are here today. Um, I, I'd like to extend my thanks to um, um, the the local experts that have. Uh, helped us connect with these experts, these foreign experts, to bring them into our own hearing. So basically, um, I li I'd like to quote something from Dr. Sohail Inayatula, futures literacy is a national competitive advantage. Um, when, I, when I brought this topic up to my colleagues, both in the Senate and the House of Representatives, um, I wanted them to be, to be conscious and to, be, um, to, to realize that we need to carve out time for futures thinking because at the end of the day, it will benefit us. It's very hard as, a, as, was, as what Dr. Sohail pointed out from his own experiences um, for, for public uh, officials to really um, embrace futures thinking without the necessary training because public officials are used to putting out fires who are used to being in the now, in today. And um, obviously, obviously, um, the law requires that there are, there are um, plans that are followed. But the reality is, being a developing country and now faced with this kind of situation, uh, the knee-jerk reaction is to to deal with the pressing circumstances and the pressing needs. And that's why uh, I feel it's very important that we put not just in the vocabulary, but in the um, in the DNA of our public officials, the younger they start, the better, in really including futures thinking in everything that they do, and that's why this course is so exciting and so important. So, very quickly, let me just share a few takeaways that I've already um, that I've already that I've already 
picked up just in our hearings, uh, we've gone through the futures of education. And to me, what was very important was Dr. Peter Bishop um, had, had, had pointed out that we are using 21st century, um, a 21st century education system a, 20, a 20th century education system for the 21st century. And there has been so many changes and yet we are still stuck in our 20th century mode of delivering education. That really struck home for me because um, I, I actually am a product of a uh, teacher. My mom is a teacher. And um, I feel that it was really a blessing for me to grow up with her as a mother and as my first teacher because I was really introduced to many different forms of education. My mom, my mom had a Montessori school. And I feel for all the younger children who are, you know, being a being given a one size fit all education, just because we are still grappling with the huge population we have. Um, for those who don't know my background, I fought for and sponsored the reproductive health law of the Philippines precisely because I acknowledge and recognize that the huge population we have will, will a, lot, a lot, there are those who say that it's an advantage because you have a lot of people to join the workforce, but my view there has always been, but you, we want this workforce to be skilled. We want these children, these young people to have a, a, an amazing future and not just be, you know, like a assembly line type of um, workers in their future. And that is why I feel that their education should also be tailored for that kind of future we dream for them. So um, similarly, um, Simios Christine Reyes had said that our education system is based on the second industrial revolution, and yet we are approaching the fourth industrial revolution. So I do feel so strongly that is, there's so much catch up for us to do. Now there's a lot of data about the world shifting to a digital economy and automation. And um, regardless of, of what you read, the bottom line is we will need to upskill people even in their own homes to be more digital savvy. So it doesn't mean that um, all these other skills are unnecessary per se but we just have to recognize that the world is revolving into a digital world. So the more skills you have in that area, the more you can survive. Um, I mean, case in point, um, anyone can point out to their, if they have a, a relative who's, um, who's uh, older than, than, than us, so let's say somebody in their 60s, 70s and onward, the possibility that they are even... Um, um, comfortable moving around in their in their uh, digital in the digital space is very unlikely, and yet um, uh, this COVID has fast tracked our use of um, e payments, uh, deliveries that that you know pick up and ordering and delivering and and everything is all online. So these people will now be at a disadvantage without even having those basic skills to survive in their own homes, not even as their job. So um, I think Dr. Anita um, is with us. Dr. Anita Kelleher is with us today and she also joined our hearing. I'm very grateful for that. But one of the things I loved about what she said was that, you know, in as much as all these digital and, and um, technological skills are required, soft skills will still be very relevant. And so the ability to adopt um, the skills on creativity, empathy, critical thinking, leadership, collaboration, all of that is necessary. And to sum that up, um, futurists always refer to the four Cs, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. So um, I have a lot more to share, but I wanna give the time to our experts here. Let me just end with two things that are very close to my heart. Um, during one of our hearings, uh, GAIN director Rex Wallentan had mentioned that 54% of the websites worldwide um, use English as a medium of language. I'm, I'm, yeah, well, the dominant language is, 50, is, is English and the rest are spread out for other languages. And so I strongly feel that the Philippines has that competitive advantage in the use of the English language, and yet I do not feel that we have, been, we do not, we do not have a concrete program um, honing those skills further. And yet our neighboring countries are doing it 
10 times as much. They're taking our, they're, they're using our teachers. They're putting up um, uh, language schools in English specifically. And yet here we are, the ones with the competitive advantage, the ones with the jobs because of our English speaking skills. skills. And yet uh, it's not something we're taking advantage of. So I'm taking the opportunity to bring this up because I also want this emphasized in this program. Why reinvent or why try to do something that you're not skilled at when we already have this skill. So if this course can also focus on, you know, the skills, and I, I know um, in various presentations, Dr. Lizan has made, you know, on Bayanihan and uh, and what is what is inherently, you know, Philippine culture. Um, one of that is the reality that our history included our exposure to to the English language, to the Spanish language, and that's something that we should be taking advantage of as well. So um, in my own city, in Taguig City, uh, it gained international recognition when um, the students developed a robot that uh, served as the graduate with the graduate's photo actually shown in the face of the robot receiving the um, the diploma from, from their graduation as high school. And we were very proud of it because it was an innovation made by the high school graduates. Um, this is something that we really want to emphasize um, to, to point out that the committee's name is actually SDG Innovation and Futures Thinking. So we have to keep on innovating. We have to keep on providing that culture that allows young people, educators, scientists, everyone to have that mentality and framework of, of um, innovating. I think that's a, that's a skill, that's a culture, that's an environment that has to be creative. It can't be it, it, it sometimes is, sadly, that, you know, it's, uh, we have that perception that, oh, that's too hard to do, that'll take more time, um, there's so many barriers, there's so many red tape, so as a public official working with DAP, um, I'd like to help create that environment of innovation and of change and being prepared for the future. So let me end by saying that um, futures thinking is very important because it will help us strategically think about the future and explore all possibilities and identify unseen opportunities. I believe this was an unseen opportunity, Dr. Lizan, that we were able to fast track this program and I'm very excited for it. Thank you very much. And I look forward to the rest of the the speakers and um, the launch of the course. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Pia, for that very passionate and inspiring message. And also the knowledge sharing we had in uh, in the Senate could be our reference later on for this course. And uh, just last week, the one you organized in the House of Representatives, it's about features speak. And uh, we are glad that uh, Representative Geraldine Roman is with us. Good afternoon, Rep. Uh, Geraldine. And at this point in time, I would like to acknowledge also our President, Attorney Aaron Gilbert Caronan, uh, who just joined us. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. All right, so I would like to um, to call on Ms. Celine Abelia, our learning manager, who will introduce our um, supervising fellow in charge with our certificate course. Celine. Thank you, Dr. Lizan. I am honored to introduce our supervising fellow, Prof. Sherman Cruz. Prof. Sherman is the founder, executive director, and chief futurist of the Center for Engaged Foresight, chair of the Millennium Project Philippines Node, and co-founder and vice president of the Philippine Futures Thinking Society. He has organized futures research and action learning workshops and presented keynote addresses for government, corporate, and non-government organizations. He has published in some of the leading strategic foresight and strategy development journals in the world and presented papers and shared futures thinking conversations and panels in international conferences. To give more details about the certificate course, may I call on Prof. Sherman Cruz. Now I couldn't can unmute myself. Uh, let me share my deck. Okay, give me a couple of seconds, please. Uh, slideshow, okay, play from the start. 
Yeah, thank you very much uh, for that, Singe. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, um, it's pretty amazing to see that uh, the, this uh, certificate course uh, launch and fellowship is pretty electric. I can really feel it right now. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, several colleagues, in fact, uh, in the academy and business uh, this week, you know, asked me in Messenger, uh, Sherman, do you know any certificate course uh, that's being offered in the country right now? Uh, we need to take this course, and we've been hearing a lot about it in, in the last couple of months. And then, of course, I told them, oh, well, you know, you're very lucky because the Development Academy of the Philippines will launch its Futures Thinking course this week, and that's today. And so I gave them the link, and I hope they're in the call right now. Uh, of course, uh, uh, at the outset, I would like to say two things about this certificate course. First, you will earn, obviously, a Foundational Futures Thinking Certificate upon completion of the course. And second, this course is for everyone and there are no prerequisite nor previous experience required in teachers and foresight to enroll in the course. And the goal of uh, the Development Academy of the Philippines uh, is really to make futures thinking knowledge accessible and create a dent in the effort of democratizing the future to realize the vision of an anticipatory world or an anticipatory society. Uh, this course uh, embarks on a carefully constructed, customized futures thinking education and action learning module developed by our highly regarded faculty and experts at the Development Academy of the Philippines and uh, the Philippine Futures Thinking Society. Uh, this course draws upon uh, from the world's, uh, from the inspiration of uh, the world's top futurist, professors and, and experts, with a combined decades of experience in futures thinking, governance, public policy, and strategic management consulting. We have with well uh, integrated, simple, but powerful, tried and tested futures tools and methodologies to engage the whole body, mind, and spirit into futures work for our students to embody that futurist mindset. Uh, let me move my slide. Okay. So, uh, developing the capacity to anticipate emergence and anticipate the future by using the future can be a powerful tool to spark innovation, manage change, and social transformation. Corporate leaders, uh, in fact, Policymakers, strategic planners, governance experts, academics, advocates, and activists have utilized futures thinking tools and methods in, 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 in different parts of the world to anticipate, improvise, experiment, conceptualize, invent ideas, and things that does not exist yet to transform the future today. Normally, the outcome of this process is develop you know, the future's thinking capacity and ability of people in organizations to use the future. And some would call that as a future's intelligence or a future's intelligence systems. And uh, as I've said, the outcome normally includes the development of new questions, ideas, insights that inform design, public policy, governance, risk management, innovation, decision-making, among others. And uh, according to Riel Miller, uh, he, he's the current head of futures literacy at UNESCO, the lack of futures literacy impedes us from discovering and creating new ideas and navigate unknown terrains. Futures thinking is a critical capacity that everyone must build and develop in the 21st century as it enables people and organizations to imagine, to identify and reimagine the future. In this course, uh, you will learn these things. The origins, uh, critical theories and concepts of futures thinking, learn how to use some EC to complex futures tools and methods like horizon scanning, emerging issues analysis, scenario planning, causal data analysis, among others. You will also discover what works or not in futures thinking intelligence and practice through case studies and uh, experts' knowledge. Develop your skill set to be futures ready. 
and increase your capacity, foresight competency to use the future to innovate the today. Now, I'd like to point out two things before I end uh, this, my part. Now, this course was designed to provide course participants a safe learning space and allow them to have an open, non-judgmental, collaborative, gamified, and balanced learning environment. This course applies and blends the power of cultural intimacy with foundational futures thinking and impact-based foresight to provide a platform for all of us, you know, both the learner and the instructor, and this it does by embedding these things, critical thinking, creativity, design, experimentation, imagination, and innovation in an emergent, integrative, and empowering way. So what skills are you gonna develop at the end of this, this course? Uh, these are the skills that you will gain if you enroll in this course, visioning and foresight, leading navigational change, imagination, innovation, and leadership. Now, I think this is what you really would like to know. And as I've said, since uh, the, the objective really of the development of Academy of the Philippines is to make futures thinking knowledge accessible and participate in the democratization of futures, these are your course schedules and course fees. And to register, we have in here the link. And if you want to know more about that, please contact Ms. Selena Bellia to uh, her email and payment details will be sent uh, uh, moving forward. So that's it for me. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Prof. Charmond, for, uh, for taking us to that uh, course that we will uh, implement soon. And uh, I'm very excited to join the class as well. No? And, uh, and of course, while teachers thinking is a process, we want to make this course uh, enjoyable. No? Uh, there, there will be lots of simulation and uh, gamification tools for all of us so that we will be able to get really the interest of everyone as we democratize teachers thinking in the country. Thank you again. And at this point in time, I would like to call in again Ms. Uh, C.J. Almodal to introduce our adjunct international professors. Thank you, Dr. Elizan. It is with much anticipation that the certificate course in Futures thinking, thinking will involve uh, adjunct international faculty and local uh, adjunct faculty. I would like to first introduce our international adjunct faculty. First is Dr. Anita Sykes Kelleher. Dr. Sykes Kelleher is an experienced futurist and strategist with a passion for helping organizations and communities design and create their futures. She is a foresight, innovation, and leadership counselor with over 30 years of experience advising corporations and governments and mentoring talent teams through future oriented activities. Dr. Anita has worked in over 30 countries on a diverse range of projects, including world water and energy transition features, agriculture and food security scenarios, education, future manufacturing, creative industries, futures, emergency services scenarios, and regional development. As for our local adjunct faculty, first we have Dr. Alex Brillantes Jr. He is a professor and former Dean of the National College of Public Administration and Governance of the University of the Philippines, Diliman as well as a former commissioner of the Commission in Higher Education. He is also the president of the Asian Association for Public Administration. Dr. Brillantes is part of the faculty pool of DAP-GSPDM and serves as a senior fellow at Fail Futures. His specializations include comparative public administration, decentralization, development and underdevelopment, and governance of institutions. Next is Dr. Maria Oliva Domingo who is the president of Galayaan College and a professor at the University of the Philippines National College of Public Administration and Governance. She handles courses in human resource management and development and organizational leadership. Dr. Domingo is a much sought after resource person in strategic planning, change management, and organization related topics by national government agencies, local government units, and non-government organizations. Dr. Domingo is also part of the faculty pool of DAP-GSPDM and likewise a senior fellow at Phil Futures. 
my colleague Celine Abelia will be introducing the rest of the local adjunct faculty. Thank you, Ms. CJ. Moving on, I would like to introduce Dr. Reginald Ugadan. Dr. Reginald Ugadan is an assistant professor at the UPNC PAG and is the current college secretary and director of the Center for Public Administration and Governance Education. His research interests lie in the areas of human resource management in the public sector, public management, organizational behavior, e-government and e-policy, governance, democracy, and futures thinking in organizations. Dr. Ugadan serves as the co-founder and corporate secretary of the Phil Futures and a faculty at the DAP GSPBM. Next is Professor Herisa Del P. Flores. He is an assistant professor at the UPNC PAG and is the current director of the Center for Leadership, Citizenship, and Democracy. His specializations include development economics, fiscal administration, local and regional governance, and research methodology. Prof. Flores has been engaged as a faculty at the JAP, at DAP GSPDM and was invited to present Futures Thinking in Education during the, the Futures Conversation of the Phil Futures. Later, we will be hearing a few words from our adjunct professors together with our honorable guests. Thank you for that, Celine. At this point in time, we are excited to hear some congratulatory messages from our guests and partners. I would like to call in first Dr. Shunji Ji of Tamkang University, Taiwan. Dr. Shunji Ji, are you there right now? I saw him earlier. I think he's online already. Okay. Yes, I'm ready. Can you hear me well? Yes, very well, Dr. Okay. Shinji. Okay, great. Thank, uh, at first, thanks to having me here. And I'd like to congratulate DAP and GSPDM for launching this uh, very, uh, uh, very inspiring courses. And uh, I think, especially in this critical moment uh, for the group, I think we need something new to think about. And uh, usually we rely on the conventional wisdom for the current problem. But at a lot of time, the conventional wisdom is not enough for us to deal with those uh, biggest challenges. So we need the future wisdom. So I think this causes will enhance and foster all the participants of future wisdom and uh, to create a very good experience for you to think, imagine, and uh, create the future. So in order to do that, I think always reading is the very first step you need to do. You need to read a lot of the material and to make yourself become a very future sensitive person. So by doing that, I strongly urge you and encourage you to read our journal. Because uh, Tamkang University has been publishing a very uh, a popular and well-recognized uh, professional journal on future studies. The title is Journal of Future Studies. It's on the web, completely free to download. And uh, Sohel has been the editor for decades. So it's a very good source for your future thinking. And I believe, I always believe reading can inspire your thinking. So please read our journal. And again, I'm really happy to see the community of future study is expanding and expanding. And I miss Philippines. I, I feel so sorry I couldn't be there in person. I was in Laos 2014. That's my only experience of Philippines, and I miss a lot. I really love there, and that's a very good place for workshop. Yeah, that's my very, very deep uh, and uh, fond memory. So again, congratulations, uh, a great course, and I wish everyone has a very fruitful uh, learning, and please stay cool. The weather here in Taiwan is burning hot. So I think, uh, yes, we need to really, really need to stay cool. Okay, thank you, that's it. 
Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Shunji Ji. Dr. Yeah, Shunji Ji is the director of Graduate Institute of Future Studies in Tamkang University, and he is also our uh, global board advisor at the Philippine Teachers Thinking Society. And uh, Dr. Sohail Inayatula really endorsed Tamkang University to be our model in, uh, in our course offering. Thank you for uh, sharing with us your journal, uh, Dr. Shunji Ji. Thank you. That's my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, oh, and oh, by the way, when everything will uh, be in a normal situation already, we'll bring you to the different parts of the country. So you'll okay. be able to experience uh, other, uh, yes. you know, culture. Yeah. Thank you for that. And uh, at this yes. point in time, I would like to uh, call on Dr. Anita Sykes-Kelleher, who is always with us. She's a mentor and uh, she is our adjunct professor. And um, also she is the founder and director of Designer Futures Australia. So Dr. Anita. Thank you, Lizanne. Uh, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge Senator Pia Cayetano for her ongoing championing of futures thinking in the Senate and her support of the initiatives being introduced by DAP GSPDM, this high level support lends weight to ways of thinking and working that are new and therefore challenging for many people. And your involvement, ma'am, and that of your committee for the SDGs Innovation and Futures Thinking opens doors for young talent in the Philippines to explore and shape new futures for themselves, their families and the country. Secondly, congratulations, Dean, Dr. Lizanne Ferranti-Kilina. You have worked tirelessly to engage with futures and foresight programs in other countries, as well as educate yourself and your team in this field and lead the development of this certificate in futures thinking and have a life. <laughs> so congratulations. I'm delighted you've been able to use your learning to achieve this level of impact in the Philippines. I think for anybody studying future studies, um, you could be a really good role model for young, uh, young people in the Philippines. I look forward to working with you and the DAP GSPDM family again next year. I'd like to particularly mention at this point, there's a lot of people that work behind the scenes and we don't see their faces up here on the screen. Uh, without them, our work would not run smoothly, whether it's catering or the um, IT people who keep helping me out <laughs> with my Zoom challenges and so on. Um, so thank you to all those people because you've also been an integral part of making this course happen. Um, finally, congratulations to all involved in the development and launch of this certificate course, which builds on the informal and non-formal short courses that have been so well received in the recent past. And I can see that this course will be a forerunner for a suite of formal programs that go on to develop futures thinking and innovation capabilities within the public service and in the broader Philippine society. And never has there been a better time to learn how to systematically anticipate plausible futures for policy and strategy decisions while engaging your communities in the co-creation of stories of hope. So thank you for inviting me to be a part of it and congratulations once again. Thank you, Dr. Edita. At this point in time, I would like to read some notes in our chat box. It's from uh, Dr. Malu Rebolida, our senior uh, fellow. Uh, she says that we move critical thinking to creativity, to innovation and design and to transformation as we engage in features thinking. And also from um, Dr. Marcus, this is about creative uh, practices. And uh, he also mentioned that features literacy in the DNA is very cool, as mentioned by Senator Pia earlier. Uh, and uh, right now, as mentioned by um, by Senator Pia and reiterated by Dr. Marcus, 20th century education in a 21st century world, but also a 20th century understanding of governance too. The very, very good observations. Okay, so I would like to, um, to acknowledge also Dr. Um, Manuel Muhi, president of Polytechnic University for his uh, congratulatory message. President Wong. Hello, good afternoon. Do you good hear afternoon. me? Yes, yeah. very well, sir. Okay, uh, Honorable Senator Pia Cayetano, Dean Lisan Perante Calina, Honorable Representative Geraldine Roman, Dr. Marcus Buzay, 
Attorney Caronan, Dean Alex Berliantes, Dr. Lily Domingo, fellow academicians, experts, consultants, and participants. Magandang hapon po. Good afternoon sa ating lahat. The Polytechnic University of the Philippines wishes to congratulate the Graduate School of Public and Development Management of the Development Academy of the Philippines for another milestone in higher education with the launching of its Futures Thinking Program. Future literacy has been around for many years now and it is recognized as a capability and a new way of thinking that is based on anticipatory assumptions. Planners and policy experts from different disciplines are equipped with this skill. But now finally, this is special skill of looking at the future will be recognized as an emerging field of study. We may ask ourselves, why do we study something that has not happened yet? The answer is survival. We anticipate what will happen in the future for us to know what to do at present since the future does not exist in the present, but anticipation does. It is the form the future takes in the present. Futures thinking through scientific approach will give us a scenarios based on forecast 20 or more years from now, where we can base today's major decisions and courses of action. Because to survive in the future, we need to adapt, we need to change, we need to innovate at present. I'm sure the academic community is excited just as I am on what's ahead of us and anticipating at this new program on futures thinking unravels as a promising new field of study or part-time. PUP faculty is more excited to be part of the certificate course in Futures Thinking. Again, congratulations to the Graduate School of uh, Public and Development Man Management with its Dean, Dr. Lisan Kalina, and Attorney Caronan Jr., President CEO of the Development Academy of the Philippines. And we look forward to future collaborations with DAP and other fellow higher education institutions towards harnessing future thinkers of today. Marami salamat po at mabuhay ang DAP. God bless. Maraming salamat, President Bong Muhi. And also for your interest to join the certificate course, uh, we're looking yes, forward uh, to your participation and of course the participation of PUP faculty members. And uh, before I proceed to the video presentation uh, or video message of uh, President Tirso Ronquillo, I would like to read uh, some notes here. Um, from Dr. Anita, she mentioned about regenerative design. You know? um, this is her response to Dr. Rebulida. I would like to say about uh, say something about regenerative design because we are um, we are now conducting a research on regenerative cities. So we want to have sustainable sustainable cities, wherein in a regenerative uh, cities framework, we are looking into incorporating culture environment, and of course, the importance of people to have a quality of life. So it's, uh, it's moving forward from smart cities to regenerative cities. This is the way to go towards a sustainable development and towards a future that cares. Thank you for that. And uh, I think Celine, uh, would you like to play now the video message of uh, President Tranquilio? President Tranquilio is the president of PASO. Uh, Celine, we cannot hear the, the audio of uh, President Tranquilio. Can you do it again? All right. Uh, from Ma Maria Ophelia. Yeah. Okay, uh, can, can you play it again, Celine? 
on behalf of the Philippine Association of State Universities and Colleges, I congratulate the Development Academy of the Philippines Graduate School of Public and Development Management for coming up with a new course on futures thinking. It's high time for us Filipinos and all citizens of the world to innovate and think of the future. Let us focus our institutional programs on sustainable development in order to guarantee a better world for future generations. Okay, thank you, President Tranquilio, for that video congratulatory message. Uh, Dr. Marcus Busi says that uh, he has PhD students working on regenerative cities. Thank you for that. Uh, I will keep in touch. Okay, from our uh, local uh, experts, we would like to hear a congratulatory note from Dr. Maria Lili Domingo. Ma'am? One. Yes, good afternoon to all. And um, uh, let me say that my engagement with the Development Academy of the Philippines was really an honor for me. I've been teaching in the University of the Philippines for a long time, and, but my engagement with DAP was about a few years back. But today, I feel more privileged because I'm part of a very historic event. Today, we are launching a certificate course in futures thinking. I have been involved personally in thinking about the future just before the turn of the century when we tried to develop different scenarios for the Philippines at the turn of the century. But I'm not really aware that there exists any formal course in futures thinking in the Philippines. There might be, but I'm not aware of it. I know that there are degree programs, um, bachelor's degrees, master's degrees in futures thinking in many parts of the world. And so I consider this uh, today, what we're doing today, as something that is really a milestone. Um, Dr. Lizan was my student in, uh, in, when she was taking her degree from the University of the Philippines. And under her leadership, the Graduate School of uh, Public and Development Management has really speeded up all of its activities. And today we see one of the fruits of her efforts. Uh, we see the importance really of futures thinking highlighted by the pandemic. The social distancing as a result of the pandemic has compelled us to shift our, the ways of our doing things. Well, it has caught us unprepared, not only in terms of health systems. Last Monday, the eldest of my grandchildren started his grade one schooling. And the um, video posted by my son shows a picture of a young boy in uniform, but inside a virtual classroom with headsets on and with a tablet in front of him all alone. This picture is not common to all of us, but it is part of the present and much more part of the future we are going to face. And if we had engaged more actively in future thinking many years back, we might have anticipated much earlier and be prepared more for this kind of an event. And so I have a grandson without classmates, maybe virtual classmates, and that's happening, I think, not only all over the country, but in many parts of the world as well. This highlights the importance, really, of anticipating the future. And so I am excited about what the fruit of the seed that we are planting today will yield. Eventually, I hope it's going to result in a formal degree program, maybe a master's degree in futures thinking, just like in other countries. And today we start to dream. And earlier in the um, uh, message of Dr. Marcos, he stated that it takes people to dream. And those kinds of people, more importantly, we need 
influencers on our side. And so I am very happy this afternoon that we have Senator Cayetano, who has been a very strong um, patron of futures thinking. And I see here um, Congresswoman Geraldine Roman, and these are people of influence. And I hope there will be more persons of influence engaged in futures thinking. So future policymaking, policymaking for the present will in already include the ingredient of possibilities that will happen in the future. So congratulations to the Graduate School of Public and Development Management. Congratulations to our student, Dr. Dizan. Um, we had high hopes with her and I see that GSPDM is flying because you are there. And, and I invite all of you, policymakers, academics, practitioners, come. Let's go. Let's dream. Let's learn about the future. Congratulations. Thank you, Mamili, for that love and support, as always. At this point in time, I would like to call on Dr. Reggie Ugadan for a few words. Dr. Reggie, are you there? Yeah, there you go. Hi, Dean. Good afternoon. Um, Good afternoon. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, Again, uh, I think this is really a great opportunity for for everyone. I think here in, in the Philippines, because you know the the effort made by the Development Academy of the Philippines of offering a certificate course certificate course on um, futures thinking, we actually um, this is one of our of our dream in in the field futures thinking society to democratize the the full field futures um, you know field futures thinking. So. To, to educate more people in, in the Philippines to, to engage or to, to, to embrace the idea of field future or the, the futures thinking, I think. Um, and also you know, the, the, the dream that maybe all of our policymakers will, will invite the, the perspective of field futures, th uh, the, the, the futures thinking in, in policy making. So we are looking forward for, for an active, um, uh, participation also of our policymakers, or we'll see soon no? um, some of our policymakers to join the or to to enroll in the certificate course. So I think um, you know from the bottom of my heart, I, I really thank uh, the Development Academy of the Philippines through the, the the Graduate School of Public and Development Management for bringing me in as as, as one of the local faculty that will um, of course. Um, we look at the different tools you know, that may be applicable for, for strategic foresight or for um, futures thinking. So thank you very much. And once again, congratulations to, to DAP um, JSPDM. Thank you, Dr. Reg. Uh, before I call on uh, Dr. Alex and Prof. Dell, I would like to request uh, Congresswoman Geraldine Roman for a congratulatory message because we were together in uh, that feature speak organized by uh, Senator Pia last week. Congresswoman Geraldine. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Alizan. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Senator Pia Cayetano for introducing me and allowing me to join in our uh, activity last week, which opened my eyes basically to the concept of uh, futures thinking. Actually, the concept of futures thinking has always been present in the minds of many of our policymakers and legislators. And whenever we try to uh, craft legislative measures, we always try to, number one, uh, assess the present situation and try to make and effect some changes. And for this to happen, future thinking is necessary. As I would always uh, tell myself, future thinking spells the difference between mere survival and coping and being competitive with a marked advantage. So I guess all of us lawmakers want to be on that competitive, want to have that competitive edge. Anyway, last month I delivered a speech entitled The Lessons That We Learned from the COVID-19 Crisis. And rather than a mere exercise of humility and uh, trying to find fault, where have we failed or blaming other people, which is the farthest 
you know, and the most remote reason why I delivered this speech. What I basically try to emphasize is that, uh, you know, there are two sides to a coin, uh, always, you see. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemics me meant a lot of suffering to, to, to us Filipinos, but at the same time, it was an eye-opener. It was an opportunity for us to actually analyze where we have failed in the past with the objective of trying to devise policies and laws in the future that will cope with the changing times. And you know what, uh, as Senator Pia said, uh, human nature dictates that uh, we, are, we just stay in our comfort zone. And this is understandable and we hold on to our customs and our habits, no matter how bad they may be. But uh, after COVID-19, I guess, uh, we have no choice. We really have no choice but to, to think of things in a different light and to adopt this futurist mentality when we ever, whenever we uh, try to uh, craft our legislative measures. So I want to thank the Development Academy of the Philippines. Uh, and I, I look forward uh, to joining you for the rest of this course. And uh, hopefully this will uh, uh, enable me and uh, I plan also to share my knowledge, whatever I gain from this course with my colleagues in Congress. This will serve uh, to help us uh, craft and uh, legis uh, legislative measures that will be more sensitive to the needs of our countrymen, not only in the present, but also in the future. So maraming maraming salamat. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat, Congresswoman Roman. And of course, uh, we are looking forward to see you in our next activities for uh, Futures Thinking. Dr. Norma uh, Langitagaza from Germany, who is also our adjunct professor, says that Futures Thinking should, not, uh, should be seen not only as having the toolbox, but it should be seen as an attitude. That's right, ma'am. And uh, we are really changing the mindsets no? and the behaviors of our uh, stakeholders. I would like also to acknowledge um, ARTA Deputy Director General Ernesto Perez is always uh, with us in many, many activities that we are conducting. And also the ILG Program Officer, Ms. Pamela Carbonell, one of our collaborators as well. So I would like to acknowledge at this point in time, Dr. Alex Brilliantes for his congratulatory message. Sir Alex. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you have to unmute me. Uh, thank you, Lisan. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lisan. Uh, first and foremost, our greetings to uh, Senator Cayetano, ma'am, and of course to Congressman Roman. Uh, it's, it's always so good to be with you, but equally important, uh, I'd like to greet my friends from the, I used to be with Ched and I always honor them, our president, Tirso Ronquillo, and of course, Dr. Bongmuhi of the PUP, and of course, Noel de Guia, uh, one of our stalwarts when I was with Ched, uh, who continue, when we continue to work together, and it's been a privilege, uh, Centro Cayetano, for us to work with, with Noel. Uh, number two, thank you very much to our keynote speakers, Dr. Buxley, and of course, to Again, uh, Senator Caetano, and of course to our uh, to Anita and to our friend from Taiwan, Dr. Shun J. Tay. It's unfortunate that the, Taiwan is just only 45 minutes away and you've just been as far as, as, as uh, Lawag. So do come, you know, we're really so near yet so far. And we have a lot of linkages with our friends from Taiwan and really I'm happy to meet you and for, for our, our common colleagues, Sohail, to introduce us. Um, some of whom I mentioned this before, so I used to be my graduate, uh, we used to be classmates at the University of Hawaii. And we, were, uh, we had two courses on futuristics under Jim Dator. And it's so nice that we have come together again. I don't know if so highly you're listening, but yes, we, went in, we met in, in, in uh, Bangkok in a, in a similar program. And it's so good to be with good friends. Of course, that's an indication of our age, but who cares about age these days? I mean, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Lily talked about Lisan. I'm so proud of you, Lisan. And uh, you are now the dean. Third is really, Lisan finished public administration. Let me emphasize that this, uh, our venture into future thinking is not new because its home is really in the discipline of public ad, particularly in policy analysis. But after having said that, but after having said that, future thinking is really something that really deepens the discourse. 
something that's very, very critical, very, very important in changing the mindsets. And as, the, as Central Pia mentioned, not, not living in the present, but to live in the future. And so I talked about the importance of creating our future. So I'll talk about the importance of us uh, creating our own narrative. So in one sense, some may be pessimistic, but futures thinkers are optimists. We are optimists because we create our future. But after having said the, that we are optimists, we also have to continue exercising critical thinking. We don't, we don't swallow everything hook line, and, hook, line, and sinker, which is what education is all about. Looking at the question behind the question, critical thinking. Some people talk about theory and practice, praxis, a Hegelian term about uh, uh, being very critical, but equally important, this would be about phronesis, phronetic, practical wisdom. We look at the, we are, we are highly uh, theoretical, yet grounded, and that's what it's all about. So we're not really idealistic pie in the sky, but as we say in the Philippines, ang ating pinag-aralan po ay naglalanding. It is realistic, yet optimistic. Now, let me end by saying, you know, um, we're very grateful indeed that uh, 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 Senator Cayetano initiated this. And I've had the privilege now to work with the, well, we're still about to work with the uh, Department of Education, ma'am. Uh, as you know, we're working with uh, Secretary Briones and Undersecretary Malaluan about the future thinking office. And this is where it becomes grounded. We just don't talk about it at the, at the, at the theoretical level. It's grounded. So I think the, the office of Senator Cayetano talks about how can we can have futures thinking offices in all agencies. If it is quote unquote institutionalized, it can be there as a structure, but most important, how will we change the mindsets of our people? Yes, you have the institutional structure, but equally important, and this course will really be very, very important that how to change the mindsets, how to change our behavior, and really it becoming some kind of a second nature for all of us, not only living in the present, not being reactive, but futuristic, but equally important, optimistic, living in our, our uh, in, in, in the, uh, uh, in the uh, metaphor, our future metaphor that, that uh, uh, Sohail mentioned. And our metaphor, as mentioned by Dr. Lisan, is really, we are one community, Bayanian. Hey, that's not new because it's really very Jose Rizal-like. That's why it was really, Jose Rizal is our national hero, as you know, and we talk about us being one community. So with that, I would like to thank you for this opportunity, Dr. Lisan. It's a privilege. And of course, to all of your colleagues, uh, it's really with gratitude that, uh, and humility that I am privileged to be part of this very, very important effort. Maraming salamat po, mabuhay po ang DAP, which by the way was my first, uh, uh, I was first employed in DAP a long, long time ago. So I'm back to my quote unquote home. Maraming salamat po, mabuhay po kayong lahat. Thank you, Sir Alex, for that very candid congratulatory message. Yes, indeed, education and futures thinking is very important. So we are all inspired by, by your congratulatory messages and uh, the points you raised really uh, lead us to a future that will take care of the next generation. So that is really about the intergenerational responsibility that we have to promote. At this point in time, I would like to call on our president and CEO, attorney Engelbert Carona, for his closing remarks. Sir? Okay, good afternoon to each and everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, extend my gratitude to our faculty and uh, our partners and also our uh, uh, supporting partners, including, of course, uh, Senator Pieta Cayetano and Congressman uh, Roman. Thank you very much, ma'am, uh, for uh, gracing this occasion. Um, we at DAP, uh, see the significance of uh, futures thinking, not only as a tool, actually, but uh, also as a mindset that is necessary to meet uh, the challenges of the bureaucracy in the private sector. Uh, this, uh, this conclusion uh, came about because of our observation in the past at DAP of the apparent inability of our bureaucracy to cope with the, with the VUCA environment. And so last year, uh, we tried to make an analysis of uh, what is 
what are the root causes of this inability to cope with the environment? And it turned out that uh, one of the more fundamental reason is because we are unable to anticipate future trends. And so uh, immediately after uh, recognizing that as a problem of the bureaucracy, we at the AP, as a training institution for the government, uh, immediately decided to do two things. One, uh, that all senior managers of the AP undergo training in strategic foresighting. And we already did that on two, two times. And second, we tried to create a concept not establishing the AP's own center for strategic futures composed of three laboratories. That is the data analytics laboratory, smart communities laboratory, and lastly, the innovation laboratory. I would like to congratulate uh, the Mizan for extending this new direction of the AP by converting this uh, new skills and competencies within the AP into uh, a certificate course for the benefit of the public in general in compliance with our mandate to provide training and education. So once again, congratulations Dean Lizan, congratulations uh, to GSPDM, and uh, thank you very much for the support coming from our uh, uh, faculty. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Attorney Engelbert Carodan, for the support and uh, for really encouraging us to push for this uh, certificate course on futures thinking. So that ends our um, inaugural uh, launching of uh, the course on foundational futures thinking and our fellowship. I am very happy and inspired that uh, there are a lot of messages in our chat box. You are uh, communicating to each other. So this is really a good platform wherein we converge together, uh, the government sector, uh, the academe, the private sector converge for this uh, momentous event, which is of course uh, democratizing uh, features thinking in the country. So I would like to thank our keynote speaker, Dr. Marcus Bossi. Uh, I will keep in touch and for sharing his uh, insights and knowledge in today's launch. We also thank Senator Pia Cayetano for recognizing GSPDM and always engaging us in, uh, in committee hearings. Now we're happy to share our, um, our, our knowledge now on the features of uh, different sectors. And also, um, Prof. Sherman for introducing our new certificate course and of course our faculty members. Uh, thank you Dr. Sunji Ji, um, Dr. Sohel Inayatula for his mentorship, Dr. Tir Soronquillo, Dr. Muhi, uh, Mr. Noel Deguia, and of course um, Dr. Anita uh, Kelleher, Dr. Domingo, Dr. Brillantes, uh, Dr. Ogadan, Professor Flores. Uh, thank you very much and of course to all of you, you are all an inspiration uh, towards this uh, uh, democratization of features thinking in the Philippines. So before we end, we would like to request everyone to kindly uh, go to their uh, speaker view tool and let's have a photo session. I think Celine will be the one to, uh, to grab this, the screen. No? So we'll have a screenshot. Right. On my count, everyone. One, two, three, smile. Okay. Okay, what about page two? <laughs> Up to page five. Okay, yeah. Let me know when you're done, Celine. Okay, captured everyone, Miss. All right, thank you. Wow, that fast, you know. Uh, I have a very innovative and agile staff at the Graduate School of Public and Development Management. So thank you, everyone. Good afternoon and have a happy weekend. Bye. Apo Presidente, salamat. <laughs> May iliwak ka niyayo, Apo. I hope to see you in our uh, next session that will be on August 29 and 30.